In a world of ancient myths and legends, where gods and heroes reign, there exists a treasure of unimaginable power. Guarded by a fearsome dragon, this treasure hides a curse that can corrupt even the bravest of hearts. A hero emerges wielding the legendary sword in the midst of this, a sleeping beauty awaits, their love ignited that even the gods take notice, betrayal and deception shroud their love, and a dark prophecy looms on the horizon. Join us on an epic journey as we unravel the saga of Sigurd and Brynhild, where love defies the heavens and the strings of destiny are pulled by both gods and mortals. Our journey begins in a castle, Fafnir was originally a human, the son of the dwarf king Hrydmar in Norse mythology. He and his two brothers, Regan and Otter, came into possession of a vast amount of gold and a powerful magical ring called the Anvaranaut. The Anvaranaut was cursed. It was originally stolen from a magical river by a god named Loki. This theft led to a series of calamities, including the death of Otter, one of the brothers. To compensate for the loss of his son, Pridmar demanded a ransom in the form of the cursed treasure, which included the ring, the curse of the Anvaranaut was so potent that it corrupted the hearts of those who possessed it, driving them to commit terrible deeds out of greed and paranoia. Fafner, consumed by an insatiable desire for the treasure and the power it represented, became increasingly greedy and paranoid. Over time, his lust for the treasure transformed him into a monstrous dragon. Fafner, had been consumed by greed and transformed into a dragon while guarding a vast treasure. This treasure included a powerful magical ring known as the Anvaranaut, Regan was deeply interested in acquiring the dragon's hoard for himself, including the Anvaranaut. He believed that if his nephew, Sigurd, could slay the dragon Fafnir, the treasure would then belong to him, with the intention of equipping Sigurd to defeat the dragon, Regan took the shattered pieces of the sword once owned by their father and reforged them. The sword had broken in an earlier battle with the evil dwarf Anvari, who cursed it with misfortune, Regan, using his exceptional blacksmithing skills, carefully reforged the shattered sword into a new weapon, which he named, Grand. This sword was legendary and capable of cutting through almost anything. Regan believed that with Gran, Sigurd would have the means to defeat Fafnir and claim the dragon's treasure, after Sigurd was manipulated into seeking the dragon's treasure by Regan, a cunning blacksmith with his own ulterior motives, this sword was forged with a singular purpose in mind, to slay the fierce dragon, Fafnir, and claim the dragon's vast wealth, Sigurd, with his trusty sword in hand, set out to confront the dragon. He followed Regan's guidance to a location near a secluded and eerie forest where Fafnir had made his lair, as he drew nearer to the dragon's lair, the anticipation and tension in the air were palpable. The place was shrouded in an eerie silence, interrupted only by the occasional rustling of leaves and the distant sounds of birds. The very atmosphere was charged with foreboding. Sigurd approached the dragon's lair cautiously, his heart pounding with a mix of fear and determination. Suddenly, the monstrous form of Fafnir came into view. The dragon was enormous, its scales like impenetrable armor, and its fiery breath was enough to scorch anything in its path the battle that followed was nothing short of legendary. Sigurd, driven by his unwavering resolve to obtain the dragon's treasure and the prophecies that hung in the balance, attacked with all his might. With each swing of his mighty sword, Gran, he managed to strike the dragon's scales. However, the dragon's defenses were formidable, and the clash was fierce, as the battle raged on, Sigurd's determination and sheer bravery proved to be his greatest assets. He sought out a vulnerable point on the dragon, a moment when Fafnir's guard was down, and he delivered a powerful and precise blow to the dragon's heart. The mighty dragon Fafnir let out a deafening, earth-shaking roar and collapsed. Its blood spilled onto the ground, and as it lay dying, it spoke of the curses and prophecies that would haunt Sigurd's future. This moment marked both Sigurd's triumph over the dragon and the beginning of a new chapter in the story, filled with tragedy and intrigue. Sigurd, unaware of the curse associated with the treasure. After defeating the dragon, Sigurd claimed the cursed treasure, including the ring and Varanoth. This treasure indeed played a role in the unfolding of tragic events, as the curse associated with the ring brought misfortune to those who possessed it. Sigurd, after defeating the dragon, returned to the blacksmith Regan, who had forged the mighty sword Gram for him and had advised him on how to confront Fafnir. Regan, 
consumed by greed and desiring a share of the dragon's treasure, demanded that Sigurd give him a portion of the spoils. But here's the twist, Sigurd, aware of Regan's covetous intentions and believing that the treasure was rightfully his for having slain the dragon, refused to share the wealth. This refusal led to a heated dispute between the two, in the midst of this argument, Regan attempted to take advantage of Sigurd by attacking him. However, Sigurd was quick to react and defended himself, ultimately killing Regan. This act left Sigurd as the sole possessor of the dragon's horde and Anverinot. Let's step back a moment and see our heroine of this story Brynhild. As a Valkyrie, Brynhild had the important duty of selecting fallen warriors to enter Valhalla, the great hall of the gods, where brave warriors enjoyed an afterlife filled with glory and honor. Odin, as the chief of the gods, was the ultimate authority in such matters, and he expected unwavering obedience from his Valkyries. However, Brynhild chose to deviate from Odin's instructions. She defied his command by intervenes in a fight between heroes Angar and Hjalm Gunnar in favor of Angar. This angers Odin because he wanted Hjalm Gunnar to win the fight, she helped him because Angar made an oath when she was 12 year old that she had to help him when he was in danger, this act of insubordination enraged Odin, who considered her actions a direct challenge to his authority. In response to Brynhild's disobedience, he condemns her to life as a mortal, imprisons her in a castle surrounded by a ring of fire, and places her in a deep sleep from which only a hero can rescue her, and declared that she must marry. She swore that she would not awaken to marry unless a man came who knew no fear, and overcome her in combat. After that, while on his heroic adventures, Sigurd encountered an old man, who was none other than Odin in disguise. Odin explained that Brynhild had chosen to aid the mortal hero Sigmund against Odin's will. As a result, she was cast into an enchanted sleep surrounded by an impenetrable wall of fire. Only a hero of great courage and destiny could rescue her. Equipped with this knowledge and driven by his destiny, Sigurd embarked on a daring quest to save Brynhild. When Sigurd arrived at the wall of fire that surrounded Brynhild, he was determined to free her from her fiery prison. He carried with him the powerful sword named Gram, which was capable of slicing through almost anything. With this mighty weapon in hand, he approached the wall of fire, as he got closer, he noticed a magnificent shield and armor that had been placed there by Odin. These items were meant to serve as rewards for any hero who could successfully reach Brynhild. Sigurd, recognizing their value and perhaps sensing the gravity of the task ahead, put on the armor and took up the shield. With Gram in one hand and these protective items in the other, Sigurd fearlessly faced the wall of fire. If you watching this video till now, support me by subscribing this channel. He wielded his sword with precision and strength, cutting through the flames, and it allowed him to penetrate the fiery barrier that had kept Brynhild in prison. Once he had breached the wall of fire, he found Brynhild lying in a deep, enchanted slumber. She was surrounded by a circle of flames. This enchantment had kept her in a timeless sleep, waiting for the hero who could rescue her. Sigurd, undeterred by the enchantment and overwhelmed by her beauty, gently approached Brynhild. As he reached her, he was struck by the profound and magical connection that seemed to bind them instantly. It was as though their destinies were intertwined, and their love was preordained. Brynhild was awakened from her enchanted slumber by Sigurd's presence, and the two of them pledged their love to each other, exchanging vows of eternal commitment. As a symbol of their love and enduring bond, Sigurd gave Brynhild a precious ring. After that Sigurd returned to castle where he was initially enchanted by a potion given to him by Grimhild, his foster mother, and a skilled sorceress. This potion made him temporarily forget his love for Brynhild. Brynhild used this potion to manipulate Sigurd into marrying her daughter, Gudrun, who was also deeply in love with him. Without letting Brynhild know about this marriage, Gunnar, Gudrun's brother, desired to marry Brynhild, the powerful and beautiful Valkyrie. However, Brynhild's heart was already given to Sigurd, who had rescued her from her enchanted slumber. Brynhild had promised to marry only the man who won her in duel. Knowing that he couldn't win against Brynhild, Gunnar turned to Sigurd, who had already demonstrated his bravery by defeating the dragon Fafnir. Gunnar asked for Sigurd's help to win Brynhild's hand in marriage, even though Sigurd was already in love with her. Sigurd, under the influence of Gudrun's mother, Grimhild, and a magic potion, agreed to aid Gunnar. The potion caused Sigurd to forget his love for Brynhild temporarily. Sigurd and Brynhild engaged in duel, and Sigurd won, after that Gunnar and Sigurd swapped identity each other. Under the disguise as Sigurd, Gunnar claimed Brynhild as his bride, 
after the wedding between Brynhild and Gunnar, the newlyweds retired to their chamber. However, despite the marriage, Brynhild noticed something strange. Gunnar showed hesitation and reluctance to consummate the marriage, which immediately raised her suspicions. To confirm her suspicions, Brynhild devised a test to uncover the deception. During their wedding night, she asked her husband to draw the sword Gram, which was famously associated with Sigurd. She believed that only Sigurd could unsheath the sword. When Gunnar attempted to draw the sword, he failed repeatedly, proving that he was not the true hero Sigurd, realizing that she had been deceived and married someone other than the love of her life, Brynhild was devastated, her heart was shattered. She felt deeply betrayed, not only by Sigurd but also by Gunnar. In her anguish and anger she ordered Gunnar to assassinate Sigurd, after Sigurd killed by Gunnar, Gunnar killed him also for his treasures. During everyone attending his funeral, Gudrun the wife of Sigurd who was deeply in sorrow and loss, confessed the truth about the love potion and her mother's scheme to Brynhild. When Brynhild realized the truth, she was deeply feel guilty, sorrow and pain. Overwhelmed by grief and remorse for her role in Sigurd's death, Brynhild chose to take her own life. Brynhild kills herself, and is burned on the same pyre as Sigurd. Her death was a final act of love and a way to be reunited with her true love Sigurd, in the afterlife.